and opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of Vegas All Net Radio, its affiliates, or its parent company. Knowledge is power, and this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Hi, welcome everybody to Nevada Cannabis News with Weekend. Uh, we've got Perry Haichu on the uh, first microphone there. Uh, Jason Sturtzman to my left. And I'm Jennifer Solis. We're all from We Can. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, Duval Dorsey. And we also, uh, D- Duval Dorsey is a, now this is quite long, a cannabis brand ambassador, an endurance athlete, and the founder of Scorpions Can. Uh, student, student organization, organization. Yeah. organization. Yep. All right. Um, and we also have Maria. Hi, Maria. And she Hello. is with uh, the Scorpions Can Foundation and the students uh, in the st- and at uh, Nevada, uh, Nevada State College. Nevada State College. Okay, that was quite a lot. Sorry, guys. Um, well, welcome, Maria and Duval. How are you guys doing today? Really good, really good. Happy yeah, New thank Year's, you so much everybody. For your time. Right. Thank you for thank you for coming out and um, and joining us here today. Let's talk about a little bit about uh, Duval's background. I know you guys have uh, Duval has been in the studio with us before, and um, he caught my eye as the 420 runner. He's been very busy since the last time we've seen him. He's been running. <laughs> yes, I have. Running. So um, what, have you been in do- what, what have you been doing since the last time we saw you? It's been about a year, yeah? Yeah, about a year. I think it was last March was the last time I was here, so about a year. Um, I've had a lot of races since then, uh, and one of those races is was my very first ultra marathon. It was a 50K, a oh uh, couple miles over 30 miles, about 32, 33 miles, and that was in the hills of Indiana. And that was in May, and so now I'm going to be stepping it up to the next distance, uh, which is a 50-mile race. And yeah. wow, unbelievable! Wow. I get I get a question for you, Deval. So, do you, you medicate before every run? Uh, well, not before every run. Um, a lot of the training that I do is out in the desert, so you know, on certain days, depending on how I feel, I medicate um, before. But a lot of times I medicate after a run, especially a long and hard run. When you get to running, you know, 20 plus miles and you get home, you know, you can feel it. So a lot of it is after, but, you know, often before as well, yeah. Are you, when you medicate, are you vaporizing or are you pr- typically using a pre-roll joint? To, yeah, to medicate? well. And are you indica sativa before and indica sativa after? Yeah, I, mean, I have a lot of friends who are uh, mixed martial arts fighters and things like that who also enjoy medicating. and. Um, they're always looking for endurance tips. Like their physical strength is never a problem, but you know the longevity in those late rounds always seems to cause trouble. So we're definitely looking for we're all looking for tips. Yeah. Uh, well, I myself I use flour just because that's what I'm used to. That's what I've been using most of my life, and um, I'm still new to some of the other methods. So I'm going to be, now that they're available here locally, I'm going to be testing them out, trying them out, see what works, what else can work. But, yeah, I normally use flour, and I normally go for, if I have a choice, I go for sativa. And uh, that's both before, during, and after. Even after when I'm trying to relax and stuff, I prefer the sativa. Um, and, yeah, that's what I use if I have a choice. Have you ever tried edibles before uh, doing sports, uh, like a tincture or an edible? Because I've enjoyed doing a light dose of an edible before some yoga. No, I haven't tried that, but it is definitely something I'm looking forward to trying. Mm-hmm. No doubt. In the near future. In the near future. Speaking of near future, when we first talked to you, you were like in the middle or, or maybe now you're at the almost the end of getting your degree. And uh, what is your degree in from uh, Nevada State College? It's going to be a visual media and communications interdisciplinary degree. And uh, when we first met, I was doing some preliminary research on a documentary I'm working on called Nevada's Emerging Market. And now, uh, a year, I was supposed to document all the dispensaries opening up this past January. 
but so uh, some wrenches got through in my plans and um so anyway now the dispensaries are actually opening so i'm going to move forward with it this january and go ahead and start shooting for nevada's emerging market documentary very cool yeah. Right on. That's very cool. That's very cool. Um, you know, we were talking before the show, and we were talking about the interesting, the interesting um, time you've had in opening your Scorpions can on campus. Because you guys are the first students in Nevada that have, have opened up a cannabis chapter on campus um, of any other clubs or any or any other organizations. Uh, was that an easy task? Uh, you know, I'm assuming it's... <laughs> well, it was It was a little bit of a challenge. Um, you know, some some there was a small group that opposed it, but actually the, the small opposition that we faced encouraged others from around the campus to become supportive. People that were like on the fence and they didn't have a position one way or the other. Once they saw that we were, our message and our interests were being kind of suppressed, then people started coming around like, oh, wow, th this is kind of interesting. They should be able to do this and stuff. So it actually got us a lot of support. Right on. That's that's really great. And what does uh, CAN stand for? Uh, Cannabis Awareness Network. Cannabis Awareness Network. Yeah. We're all about that. So we're trying to raise the awareness about the cannabis industry here in our state and in our city. And one of our main objectives is to help, to begin to help students find jobs after they get done with college and while they're in college and also to help them find internships as well and we also want to be a resource for the faculty staff and students on campus the informational hub about cannabis so if the so if the faculty was worried about or you know administration was worried about drug use on campus you know or or any other thing else that you wanted to be the um you know the source of information about about cannabis use just it, exclusively exactly right because um, one of the things that I think is critical for campuses to keep in mind is that once we go ahead and vote in recreational later this year okay the laws are going to be changing all over the states but the campus code of conduct and uh, the student code of conduct and all this stuff isn't going to be changed and so it's not going to be necessarily lightened up uh, on campus yeah they're not going to look at it lightly that's why I'm saying it's important now to raise awareness about these things so that when that change does take place we don't have students getting in trouble because they don't understand because uh, they're smoking on sure, campus right, or the, sure. and they're saying oh it's my right it got voted well, in well, the one right. thing that bothers me i think it's within the last year the nevada border regents uh i, I believe it was border regents I, I could be mistaken but i know specifically unlv said that there would be no medicating of medical marijuana on uh, on any of their campuses is that true for nevada state um yeah we well? we we don't have uh it's a zero we're not allowed to you're not allowed to use it on campus you're not allowed to have it on campus you're not allowed to bring it on campus and that's one of the things that they really wanted to drive home and that's one of the things we understand we weren't trying to like bring any cannabis on campus ever you know we but don't you, but you can have all the percocets you want and you, you can, can have a bottle sitting right on your desk as you as you take them and and in exactly class, and that's okay i think that would be okay i have seen people with have their pills on campus because they had to pop their pills They're on Ritalin, campus most likely i don't know what they were but they were <laughs> they were yeah. using them but um so yeah there's no it's not allowed on campus and that's one of the things that they tried when we were uh, facing some opposition, they were saying that, hey, if you find out that one of your members has it on campus, will you agree to tell the police and everybody else immediately? You know, that's one of the things, the stipulations they Ooh. try to tack we, we on. Sound to be Ooh, an arc. yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. kind of, yeah. that's, I was going to say that you now, now that's asking you to self-police, but not only self-police, but actually narc someone out. And you yeah. know, that's kind of against the Thanks. cannabis code of conduct. Yeah, exactly. So we were not going for that. And that's one of the Stitches. reasons we were voted down at first. <laughs> Stitches. Yeah. You know, so, but we didn't, we didn't have to agree to do that. Oh, good for you. Yeah, we didn't have yeah, to agree to do that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. after the lawyer came in. And you know, this is an interesting take on that, that the lawyer was not somebody that you guys hired from outside. This was the, this was the school's lawyer that kind of stepped in and said, hey, you guys are being heavy handed and you need to back off and let these people do, you know, have their organization because it's about what, free speech? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good so for them. I think, yeah, good for them. That's kind of a win when people, those people's attitudes are changing. Yeah. You know, people's attitudes are really changing. 
Uh, so what's the next thing for Duval Dorsey? Well, um, besides the emerging market. Yeah. Besides that, well, we're gonna move forward with our with our organization. We got Great. we got different issues that we're addressing. Okay. Um, I want to help. Uh, I want one of my big goals this semester. Is one of our big goals this semester is because one of the things that we do want to do is help students be able to get their license, especially the students that have a, a serious medical need. So right now we haven't actually helped anybody get their license, but next semester we hope to have our very first student get approved and go through the process of getting their license. We hope to be able to help them with that. So that's one of our objectives for next semester. Well, that's great. You know, we can help out with that structure if you need. Absolutely. Um, I, actually, I was talking about your big endurance run. Oh, yeah. The big, <laughs> yeah, in May, um, I'm looking at doing a very interesting race. It's called the V3. It's uh, put on by Calico Racing, and you can find all that stuff on their website if you put it on Google or V3 Las Vegas. And um, it's going to be a 150-mile race, and it's going to be uh, over the course of six days, approximately 25 miles a day for the first four days. On the fifth day, there's 48 miles, and on the last day, it's like five or six or seven miles to the finish line. And so this is a huge feat. That The 50-mile the races that I'm doing before that is just to build up to be able to do that. Those, are, those big ultra marathons are my training. So now I'm going to be doing this. It's in May. It's going to be in the Valley of Fire. And uh, it's, it's, uh, one, it's a race that athletes are normally sponsored to do by, dif by different um, nutritional endurance uh, supplements and different uh, sports branding products and stuff like that. And I'm going to be representing the cannabis community there. Um, the entry fee is thirty-two hundred dollars, so it's Ooh, a bit steep, and uh, it's a self-supported. It's a it's a self-supported. There's a lot of uh, stuff that goes in, into these long races. Um, my overall goal, it, once I get out of you know my my big dream is to travel around the world and do these giant long races like this but to be have this as my career you know so this would be my very first one it's here in vegas and so it's close to home i don't got to take all this stuff on the plane and well whatnot. and for those of you that are interested or don't know about this that a marathon is 25 or 26 miles yeah 26 26 miles yeah. and uh, so a marathon's 26 miles and an ultra marathon is what 50 well anything over 26 would be an ultra so a 50k is 32 then they have the 50 mile race then they have the 100k then they have the 100 mile so you're running the equivalent of four marathons and an ultra yeah yeah exactly. in five days yeah that's what it's gonna boil down to so see that takes a lot of training beforehand yes you know a lot yeah. of training beforehand and you can believe there's gonna be some chronic pain going on during <laughs> that run well, I'm you feeling know? pain just hearing about so, it so you know but it definitely can be done people do it all over the world every day and uh, it's something I've been training to do and um, yeah if you want to find out more you can see on my website countdown to silverman.com even though the silverman isn't coming back to Las Vegas anymore uh, I wasn't able to compete last year, but um, hopefully I'll be able to do it a uh, half triath uh, triathlon in the future. But yeah, the website is countdown to silverman dot com, and you can find out all about that that race and stuff. Wow. First of all, do you have like a, a certain diet? Because I'm sure you burn a lot of calories. Do you, and do you do any infused edibles as well? Um, well, I don't eat pork and beef. Mm -hmm. You know, but I do eat, uh, you know, a lot of chicken and fish and turkey. Um, but I don't have anything real special and specific. But like you did say, I do burn a lot of calories. Um, I do try to uh, keep enough fuel in the tank because without that, you can't really uh, do what you got to do. Um, and uh, so I don't have a specific diet. And like I said, I, the only edibles that I've been exposed to at this late stage in the game, you know, uh, at this point is like, a cookie here and there and some cookie dough here and there just know, you know I know I know uh, it's really important for endurance racers to have um, you know like little packets of sugar and I was just thinking about over in Nevada Pure they had these honey bears evergreen organics is making honey sticks so this would be great ways to medicate as you run 10 milligrams on the honey sticks um, uh, running around with a honey bear would be a little bit hard uh, <laughs> with 100 milligrams of, of THC in it. Yeah. But that I think that'd be a great way because you usually for runners, from what I understand, they need high amounts of sugar um, 
to, to, to burn that energy, correct? It, exactly right. That's why they have those little goos and stuff. Yeah, the goo. Yeah. Run and chewy things. So, yeah, and mm -hmm. basically when you – uh, use cannabis and then you're in the race a lot of times mm -hmm. the races I do are far out in the desert and a lot of times mm -hmm. you're by yourself because you're way out there and people far behind you and far ahead of you and so but still just having to you know I think that'd be a lot mm -hmm. more convenient to have yeah. that like you said go the ahead honey and sticks, honey sticks you just get just, the honey yeah, stick because yeah, yeah, sometimes if you just lighter stops right working away. you're yeah. 20 miles out you know mm -hmm. no good <laughs> so Definitely, mm. definitely. Have you found that cannabis en enhances your uh, your sports performance, or do you think it? Or I mean, you you and I kind of talked about this a little bit before. I would exercise. I used to medicate, then go exercise, and I felt like that my endorphins were just you know it it kept my endorphins up to do that. Do you feel like medicating beforehand helps you, or do you? I saw a documentary uh, where they were interviewing the whale and they said that the lively up yourself song was about bob marley smoking before he went out to play soccer because he used to love to medicate before he played soccer it was like his favorite thing to do apparently because it he said it helped him play better i don't know so what do you yeah you, well you for me i you know i know there's a lot of controversy surrounding this topic yeah. but <laughs> i believe that it does have the ability to enhance performance in certain sports and long distance running and triathlons is one of them. Now taking a big puff right before you go swimming out in the open water, that could be intimidating. But um, as far as when you're biking and running, it really helps bring that a lot of that mental focus in that you need once you hit certain distances and you're using a lot of your mental to overcome some of the right. pain and stuff. Do you listen to music when you're running? I do. I prefer to listen to music, but this was the thing. You, I became dependent on it, and then when I moved up beyond the marathon distance to the ultra marathons, a lot of times you can't rely on the batteries. And so uh, when, you, um, when you rely on it and then you're going really far and the battery dies, that could be bad. So I had to stop using music for the first half of my training and then turn it on so I could have batteries on the last half. But I had to learn to run without it because the distances became so far that a lot of times the battery would die. And with triathlon, sometimes loud. What kind of music do you listen to? Um, I listen to music. Usually I find uh, videos on, uh, I'm not trying to plug, but uh, worldstarhiphop.com. Mm -hmm. I, I find certain videos on there. They may be talking about certain different topics. So no Norwegian death metal when you're running. Uh, well, I the Rah, UFC, heavy metal. I, well, the UFC <laughs> theme song, uh -huh. Bring the Pain. Uh, here comes, wait, I think it's the UFC yeah. theme song, Bring yeah, the Pain. Yeah, yeah I do yeah. listen to that, uh -huh. you know, and so that's kind of uh, intense right there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm open to it, so yes. So Rick Ross, Young Thug. Uh, no, well, I'm uh, listening to some, I, well, I like, no, no, I like running. French Montana before he French got Montana. big. Yeah. Before he got big, I like, I like French Montana, so I got a mm -hmm. lot of his stuff. And um, and then let's go back to the '90s. Big Daddy Kane. I, I try yeah. not to listen to <laughs> anything yeah. before yeah. 2010. You know, uh, I yeah. don't listen to much stuff before 2010, just because I'm like at this new chapter when I moved. That's when I moved to uh -huh. Vegas, and that's when I said any old music because I don't want to be nostalgic and remember the mm -hmm. past and stuff. I'm moving that way. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's so. funny. That's funny. Yeah. That's a that's a great take on that's a great take on that. And so, Maria, um, um, are you, you're with uh, Scorpions Can also, and, and you're helping Duvall develop this. Are you going to be with the organization after he graduates? Uh, yes. 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 And you guys are developing the organization so that it, that, that chapter lives long, long, long after you guys have graduated. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. And what are you, what are you uh, going to school for? I am attending for my bachelor's in criminal justice as well as I have actually the a choice to make do I get my minor in sociology or do I uh, a, I think I need maybe th three more classes in psychology to receive a interdisciplinary study um, degree as well so I can do a double bachelor's degree right now and graduate by summer with both that's interesting. Criminal justice. Are you, well, yes. What are you planning to do on afterwards? Are you planning? My goal yeah. is to work for the FBI. That's my goal. <laughs> my problem is because of my health reasons, and I, um, I do have to have the uh, medical marijuana 
passing the drug test would be the biggest issue. Once yeah. Again, same thing, the same <laughs> argument as before. You can take all the Xanax yes. and Oxycontin you want and work exactly. for the FBI, but you're, uh, they don't want the dopers. The fibs don't want the <laughs> <Yes>. dopers. <laughs> and it's just, and that's just with anything, really right now, with any job that you go out for, if you have the cannabis card, even with the legal right to it, you can't find work. So do you take the chances? Because even with, you, if you take a pass, you take a drug test with the pills, you're still going to test positives for opiates and barbiturates. So you really. But there's a mean inhibitory amount that you can have in your system with a prescription for those drugs. Yeah, you can. And show so they, you can have a you can have a positive test for opiates, and as long as it's under a certain number, they consider it a negative test. Well, the, you have to show proof um, of, of your course. prescription and everything, and it's up to the employer to decide if they want to take you on and hire you or not. But if you have a legal right with the medical marijuana card... No, I mean, they can't even report you as a positive. If you go into the drug testing place and you take them your prescriptions mm -hmm. and you, you know, do your thing... It's not like that anymore. Like it's not like that anymore. I've tested positive. It's not? No. I've tested positive and they've reported it. Yeah, it's different yeah. now. They have a chief medical officer that's yes. assigned to each corporation. Like, let's say I apply for a job at the MGM Grand as a bartender. Sure. And I go through and they extend me the job offer. That means I have to go take a drug test. I have X amount of hours to go right. to sure. this drug test at their designated facility. So I go over to the Psyche Medics facility over on Sunset and they clip a little snip of my hair. And... Uh, they say, okay, let's just say it's not about weed. Let's say it's yeah, about that's what uh, yeah. let's say it's about Xanax. Okay, sure. So I show up for these barbiturates or whatever the hell I'm Opiate. testing positive for opiates. Let's say, and uh, they're going to call me, and they're going to say, okay, we've uh, sent your case to our chief medical officer, and this chief medical officer is tasked with uh, reviewing these these pre-employment verification processes, and he determines whether you're worthy of being employed at that company or not. So. It's like another, it's just another hoop you have to jump through. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow. this is why, you know, if you're watching or listening out there and you're thinking about getting a Marinol prescription from some of these local doctors, thinking that's an En-ROADS around these, these pre-employment drug testing, <laughs> that is a big no-no. You're going to spend a lot of money and you're going to be really pissed off when they deny you mm -hmm. the job because it's not a matter of going through the FDA anymore and protecting yourself through those HIPAA standards. That doesn't exist anymore. They found an En-ROADS through it by hiring a doctor and having him desert determine even though you've already been to a doctor and they've already said that this is your prescription they have to go through yeah, having not numbers. yeah they have to go through another hoop now this doctor does not examine you they don't look at your this or that they just decide they, exactly. they do they do you know a, a, an examination no. like over the phone do they talk to you well, about course, what's going on if they it, sometimes they do talk to you over the phone but usually they call you to either extend or resend the job offer Huh. Wow, Usually so the they totally medical, changed that. Yeah, well, the, it. yeah, it's it's a it's a nightmare. It really is. You know, I would love to see some legislation crafted. And we were talking yeah. about this before before the show about we would love to see legislation crafted to protect the patients, to actually protect the patients and uh would that Give work here ability. in Nevada, though? Nevada is, 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 is it, most people say it's a right-to-work state, but that's not true. It's actually an at-will at state. state right. Right. That means they can fire, they can fire you for you any reason. I mean, they don't, uh, Perry, I like you with a beard. What happened? Why did you, why did you shave your beard? And now I'm going to fire you because, you know, facial hair was important to me at well, some it's point. It's usually the other way, actually, but <laughs> oh. yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. well, yeah. My grandfather wrote the rules for a few casinos. He didn't want hair past their shoulders or facial hair because he didn't want any hippies working in his damn casinos. And that rule still <laughs> exists 45 years later. You know? And so, you know, these antiquated policies are really having a negative effect upon people's lives on an everyday basis. Like people say, oh, well, you dopers don't work. It's like, well, you won't allow me as a legitimate medical patient to enter the workforce. How the hell am I supposed to break the stereotype or contribute to society when you will not allow me to? So if we craft a piece of legislation here in Nevada, it would take on that at will status it would and it, it would probably. draw the the ire of a lot of very powerful entities the casino companies being among them who want to supposedly protect their assets but yet i have friends and family members who worked in the industry well before drug testing was implemented and see, things seem to work just fine back then well they're doing the grandfather law sure yeah. Certain things. It's, it's a nightmare. Place. It's just a nightmare. Well, I mean, just I know for a fact that if you work for MGM Grand and you have been hired for MGM Grand and then you get your medical card, then you are protected. 
Yeah, I well, know once you're in, you're in. Know. It's different. But yeah. why should people, why should she have to stop taking her medicine mm -hmm. for three to potentially six months, right. depending on how much you're, you how, how get a job. See, because they say it's a 90 day test and that's a bunch of bullshit. You can clean out, if you smoke every day, it will take significantly longer than that to clean your hair out. Well, so you'll be out of a job for up to half a year. It took me almost mm -hmm. nine months to clean my hair out when I wanted to work for Boyd Gaming. It was a, it was a mess. Well, technically, according to uh, when I went to try to apply for a job at LAPD, when I first got my bachelor's, well, my associate's degree in criminal justice, they stated once they pull your hair, marijuana stays in your system for nine years. So, well, uh, I'm screwed. Years. I don't know about nine years. Well, well Jason, never, you're screwed. I, I, well, well no, you, you cut your hair often enough, right? That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, maybe if, you're, if your hair is all the way down to your butt and maybe you've grown well, you that hair for nine years. You would have to just completely go bald, do a wax, and then... They can t they can pull your hair. But then but it's if in you're going to do a drug so test, if you're doing a drug out. test and you've you've mm -hmm. been clean for you know a year, mm -hmm. and then they go do a hair follicle test on you, and because they their stuff goes back nine years, you're disqualified. That's unfair. Well, I don't even think it's that long for the um, police, actually, because the LAPD. Well, L I'm. Yeah. Well, you know, that, there should you know be even laxer than the Nevada. <laughs> but in Nevada, in Nevada, you can not have consumed. And they're, I'm not just talking about cannabis. I'm talking about all illicit drugs, either, except so. for yeah. heroin, except for heroin <laughs> or in anything that you would shoot up, that you can have consumed in the past three years but mm -hmm. if if you stopped three years ago and now you want to become a cop for some ungodly known reason <laughs> um then, then you're eligible in nevada wow. to become a cop not like i'm trying yeah, to become still, a cop you know well but still you shouldn't have you know <laughs> i mean but if you want to work and you're you don't have a criminal background and you want to work and you have a legal right to you know, consume cannabis, especially if you have a medical reason, then why would you rather pay me unemployment? Because it's your decision not to allow me to get a job? That's, I mean, make up your mind. Well, I'm the employer and I should have the <laughs> right to tell you what you do in the privacy of your own home. And, and I need complete control over your life because I need to supposedly protect my business. But in right now in Colorado, there's a man fighting because he said what he does on his private time you should not be able to dictate if, oh, I'm, a, if I'm off the clock I should be able to do if whatever you want to I want to do are you hours talking about a day, the disc TV the, guy because well, he lost his case and, and the dish uh, TV? yeah he did yeah, the, dish this, TV, he lost his case the uh, paraplegic yep I think yeah he lost yeah. his case mm -hmm. um, oh, man. yeah it's unf I mean I just think you know what you do on your private time is none of nobody's business it's in but if you have a medical reason and this is it's better than popping pills if it's helping you, do you become a junkie from popping all the pills, or do you just have something that's a natural thing to to that consume? you're not going to have physical withdrawals exactly. off of Exactly. Well, it's you're freedom not, of choice. You know, you should be able to choose your own medical path. You shouldn't be forced. It, you should to go down that road if you don't want to just like patients who were dying should have the freedom of choice to choose the experimental medicines that they want because it's their choice it shouldn't have to go through the fda and all that kind of crap because infused ice cream well any, you know <laughs> i'm talking about more like a like a dallas buyers club kind of mm -hmm. kind of yeah. scenario you know where there is medicine that may work and they're not allowed to have it yeah. because the infamous they say that you shouldn't be able to experiment with your own health mm -hmm. which is outrageous but you know here we are we can go round and round on this all we want but really if we get change. yeah well medical medical is what it is it's not going to be affected by i guess ip1 from what we from what we hear if we get ip1 passed and recreational goes into effect we can take that momentum into legislative session the following year and hopefully Get make some, some positive rights. changes but yeah i would love to see employees rights be addressed at some point but like i said we have to choose the battles we think we can win i've said it before and i'll say it again we just have to be consciously aware of the f the fight that we'll be picking right. once we choose to pick that fight right. and there has to be enough serious uh support there has to be enough public support to make it to be able to put the pressure on and make it worth it. You know? Well, I, I mean, I had a meeting breakfast this morning with a dispensary owner, and he believes that there's there considerable forces mobilizing right now against IP1, including Sheldon uh, Adelson. With his yeah. recent uh, that purchase he, of the newspaper. And he's going to be more in the background, just so he does, if he, somebody needs to figure out 
quickly if he's going to be uh, uh, engaged somehow and maybe follow that money trail and be able to bring him out front and make him part of the opposition that if we can show that Sh Shadow Sheldon Adelson is contributing towards the opposition for IP1, then that is going to help us uh, pass IP1. You think he's so polarizing that people will re not rally to our cause, but be more supportive just because they hate him? Uh, I, that's what I've heard uh, from, that's a good, from, that's, from, from, from I, Tick. I, to this other uh, dispensary owner that I had breakfast with. Well, it's morning. believable because he donates a lot of money to these campaigns or these these initiatives, and he loses often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he does not everything he touches is is gold. Mm -hmm. So you know, well, I, I am very nervous about his ability to wield influence, especially with his recent purchase of the only valid newspaper in town. So you mm -hmm. know, we'll see how this rolls. Uh, He's got his own problems, though, because now he's going to be stepping on the toes of the liquor distribution company, who now have their fingers in this pie. And, you know, the liquor distribution companies dictate price to the casinos. Well, from, they don't negotiate. Well, they from, tell you what you're going to pay. From my meeting this morning, uh, some of those other forces are uh, some of the casino executives and also liquor, com liquor companies that, that have some opposition. You would think that wouldn't be the case, being that the liquor distributors get the first right to distribute uh, yeah. recreational cannabis. So maybe this is just uh, just a few different uh, beer and liquor companies that feel that maybe cannabis is and maybe casinos that cannabis is is a competition. I think it's only going to support the industry, well, bring more people to Nevada. Park and Place Las and Vegas. Boyd Gaming were the only two companies that donated against the original uh, back in 2001. They donated fifty thousand dollars each to oppose that, and there have been no real monies spent by the casino companies for or against, at least directly, since. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't expect any help since, uh, since the Gaming Control Board decided to disallow yeah. all gaming money or g all people holding a gaming card from entering the industry. Of course, we're not going to expect any help from them now. You know, I, I, I mean, that would, be, that would have been nice. We could have utilized that flex, but uh, there's a lot of people on the Gaming Control Board or the Gaming Commission that shouldn't be. There are a lot of uh, LDS... Um, Board members that have no gaming experience whatsoever but, that are there I mean, purely that, for political does, reasons. Don't you see this in industry so often? You have people dictating the industry who have no clue no how it works. Well, right? you know, we need gaming people running no the gaming knowledge. control board, and we need cannabis people running the cannabis industry. And you know, it is what it is. Like I said, we could go round and round on that all mm -hmm. we want, also. But you know, now we're stuck in a situation to where I wish we would have had the gaming operators for this exact reason. But we'll see how this. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to tell you I'm not nervous, so we'll see how this goes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to talk about another subject that uh, that actually has some play here in Nevada. Um, Washington, and then it, it, Washington voters approved marijuana legalization in, in 2014, um, but they just voted today uh, to to continue their ban on private marijuana clubs in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying is that uh, tourists that don't have a residence in Washington, D.C. don't have anywhere c to consume. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing is kind of going to be happening here yeah, in Las right. Vegas. If you are a tourist, you've driven into town and you don't have a hotel yet, or your hotel says no cannabis in your room, where are you going to consume? We don't have any of those clubs Nowhere. either. Nowhere. You're going to pop Cookies. on the park police or whatever. Cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, right now we can consume in our cars as long as you're, there are certain it's conditions on that. But still, I mean, if you're a tourist and you're consuming out in public, you're going to get, you know, busted if, if they see you. There is that. There is that. So what do you guys think about that? Do, you, do we need private clubs here in uh, Las Vegas? Absolutely. Yeah. Or yeah, need to work with the casino industry or these hotel lobby lobbies to yeah, uh, areas, accommodate yeah to accommodate these these potential cu uh, customer this new customer base yes. that we're attempting to attract yeah, i think they, they already quickly are i mean you have the cosmopolitan the uh sls uh, very cannabis friendly hotels that you can call down to your concierge and, and say hey by the way i need to uh medicate are there certain areas of the casino uh, that you'd recommend that I can go to Medicaid, or where is it safe for me to Medicaid? And what? they're answering uh, back to them uh, um, very appropriately uh, where they can Medicaid and consume consume their medicine. Uh, if you can get one of the balcony rooms in Cosmopolitan, then 
uh, you it's you can medicate on your balcony as long as you're not disturbing um, any um, any yeah, hotel uh, guests. That's uh, why I always close by pick a hotel with a balcony mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. But how do you know if you're disturbing? I mean, your somebody hotel calls guests? and complains and says, "By the way, know, I mean, Bob Marley lives next if is you're, staying if you next door to, to us. Uh, if you have you need to take care of this right away. If you have certain, uh, say, you get a mm -hmm. room with a balcony, and then you have a random guest that is a complainer, mm -hmm. and but this designated area is for cannabis smokers. Mm. So well, it's not designated for, for smoking. The balconies are smoking is allowed on the balconies. Yeah, I mean, but if you have, if there's a possibility you're going to have a random person that's going to complain, which is going to make it bad for everyone else. You'll always have people like that. Exactly. And, yeah, I was yeah, going to say, you'll always have one turd in the punch Yeah, you'll always have people like that, and hopefully <laughs> exactly. it'll be... It'll be similar to what hotels do now. They just kind of brush it off. They'll send the security up and walk by yeah. and say there's nothing make we it can look do. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make it look good. You know, I, I heard from, uh, I forgot who I heard it from, but apparently the thing to do if you're smoking in your hotel room and you don't want to get popped is you need to blow smoke out into the hallway in your hotel room <laughs> because if the security walks by, how the hell are they going to know what you do is you which just, which room it really is. They're not going to go knock on eight or ten you just, doors. You just put the towels at the bottom of the irregular door <laughs> and the bathroom door, and you turn the shower on so the steam can go, and they'll never know. Oh, of well, course. Sounds <laughs> like you have some experience, oh, yeah, just a bit. Thing, but I never thought to actually just, you know, make it so obvious just to throw them off the scent, you know, simple as that. That, that our, our patient needs to move to more discreet ways of medicating, such as the juju, um, pre-filled, um, uh, cannabis oil vape pens. Those are great, ranchers. by the way. Um, yes. Uh, Jolly so Ranchers. Yes. Jolly Ranchers, edibles, yeah, tinctures, I, I, capsules. I'm fully supportive of what um, you're saying. Or vaporizing because that, that'll dissipate easily up That's going to raise the amount of I the I agree. The, mm -hmm. the days of seeing a guy walk down the street smoking a pipe are, are going to be gone mm -hmm. rather quickly because yeah. if we want to be socially acceptable we need to act as such and to attempt to integrate ourselves into society that way if we can walk down the street and smoke our medicine and not have anyone be aware that's a beautiful thing yeah. have you used you know? any of the, the uh, juju oh yeah they're uh, great oh i i, I loved your, it i got your, one from las vegas your, relief recently okay. what's your impression of it loved it thought it was great if you use it like you say if you don't try to suck on it too hard and you just mm -hmm. take it slow it rips fat it's it's completely silent the smell dissipates quickly tastes pretty good they're strong they last as long as you need it to i'm all for it you know see i heard that that was an issue with a lot of of, of experienced users is that the is that the pre-filled pens mm -hmm. were just not strong enough for them well these are like 60 70 percent thc they're packing in some of these pens so they're so that they're you? Of, yeah they're heavy enough for me for sure yeah, <laughs> yeah and that that says a lot that's a lot. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I. Well, I mean, you have people right now, even without cannabis, people are complaining about the I, the vape pens, I think those are. Oh, the just the, the just, cigarette. Yeah, the, the cigarette pens. So people are complaining about those. Well, you know what? And You've always, always got to have a complainer. Exactly. Man. You, you Absolutely. try to smoke somewhere and find a, a more responsible way to smoke. And you're still going to have a group of advocates that you are going to make it You can never please everyone, but it's not going to stop else. us from trying to make strides to integrate with society to the best of our ability and exactly. to make, you know, uh, make as many believers, you know, the, as hearts and minds kind of theory, you know what I mean? If we can prove ourselves to be normal people, there's no reason for them to fight us anymore, so. Exactly. exactly. That's kind of what originally attracted me to Duvall. I was just like, I was just like this guy, he's exercising, he's doing great things, he's making great strides yeah. within the community. Totally normal. Cannabis yeah, patient. <laughs> yeah, you don't fit the stereotype, and that's the whole point. You know, there's a lot of professional athletes out there that have been demonized. Like Julio Cesar, we talked about it last week, I think. Right. Julio Cesar Chavez got a $900,000 fine for testing positive for marijuana. Mm -hmm. Insane. Nick Diaz got a five-year suspension right. for Free testing Nick positive for, mar right. for, for marijuana, which is absolutely insane. Horrible. You know, uh, we, I could go down the line of people who have been who have had their lives upended after dedicating their lives to these sports. I mean, I don't really think people are aware of what it takes to attain that level of fitness. People are like, oh, you're an athlete, great. It's like, you don't understand the Dedication. sacrifices that you've made right. to be who you are, to do the things that you're able to do on a regular basis. You know, you can't just up and decide to run a, a marathon. <laughs> Uh, you, you, people have no idea what your what sacrifices and the dedication and the fact that you're willing to pick up this banner and run with it on a, on a cannabis level is very uh, moving to me. You know, it's very inspiring. 
So I really hope that you're able to inspire more athletes to kind of come out of the cannabis closet and let it be known that it's not such a bad thing. So. Yeah, hopefully so. And um, just as you were mentioning uh, with some of the athletes that have tested positive for marijuana and all the backlash they face, especially in MMA, you got guys testing for steroids, performance enhancing mm -hmm. drugs, and, and even cocaine, and they're facing a lot less, st lot, lot less penalties than the cannabis yeah. guys are. And it's not like Nick Diaz isn't a big draw. He sells tickets. You know, yeah. so they're not just targeting the lower level guys. It's just a marijuana targeting thing, exactly. which is very strange. That is very strange because, uh, yeah, and you, we were talking about this, that, that cocaine uh, in, in boxing is, some, is allowed. It's normal. Perry, you were they, telling me this. Oh, oh my God. Okay, so I came across <laughs> here, article, here we go. I came across an article that said that when the Nevada, they were talking about, I think it was John Jones or something like that, there, why didn't he get the serious uh, suspension for cocaine? And the answer that came back was whatever respective athletic commission, whatever state that happened in, uh, had never addressed the issue of cocaine because it never came up. So they had never written specific rules against that, and that's how they got away with giving him such a lenient uh, suspension because marijuana is always such a hot-button thing. I guess athletes don't use coke uh, often enough to get popped for it because it never shows up in the drug test or whatever the hell. Well, it, well you know, the thing about right. cocaine, the two thing days. about cocaine, yeah, exactly, two days. Two days. Right. I yeah. could do cocaine on on Friday now, that and wasn't test brought up in negative on but Monday. But that would be exactly. my assumption of why it had never come up because people were smart enough to know that it goes out in two days. Right. Um, and then later, I also would like to know, when uh, John Jones, he ultimately was in a, in a minor car crash mm -hmm. and, you know, somebody got hurt, whatever. But he did have a, a cannabis pipe in his car, you know, that was there. He said he was texting, listening to his radio. That's why he crashed. But whenever he crashed, a cannabis pipe went somewhere else, so he couldn't find it. He fled the, he fled the scene or whatever. But the police found the crash, and so then he starts facing backlash because of cannabis and so now that he's all uh, back to his old self or whatever, a regular guy or whatever, unfortunately he had to go on and bash cannabis a little bit just to show to people save face. Oh. Yeah. I mean, speaking of headlines in the Review Journal, did you guys see in the Review Journal a few days ago, uh, the headline, it got picked up nationally, was that that woman who in, ha, got into oh that crash God. and oh, ran yeah. through those people, yes. she tested positive oh. for, for marijuana, and she smoked yes. it days before, she just happened to have it in her system, she was not over the limit, and they just wanted to make this a huge headline that somehow marijuana had something oh, yeah. to do with her strip crazy. Strip assailant is yeah. test positive for pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that was the whole story. I got into yes. a big Facebook fight about because you have people actually blaming it. They're like, "You see, it was the dope. I told you." Well, and and like sixty likes later, I'm like, are you, "I'm like, I am a cannabis ironic. advocate, and you are higher than I am. What is wrong with you people?" And that's ironic because if she would have smoked, maybe she wouldn't have ran over those yeah, people. No that's what I was saying. She, somebody could have gave her cannabis. She could have maybe calm down. So basically, Insane. cannabis is now. It's the devil. <laughs> no, it's it's being looked at the same way they're looking at those gun laws right now. So, well, cannabis we takes takes gotta precedence find something over to crack to and coke and everything else. And well, whenever whenever we have legislation or change coming about in a state, usually the opponents will grab headlines mm -hmm. that are going to oppose that. Yeah. I mean, like we had when we were when we were going in for dispensaries, there were a bunch of headlines about grow houses taking over Nevada. You remember that? <laughs> Which is ridiculous because a few months earlier there were the same headlines saying the commercial real estate market is so dilapidated and desperate and then the next headline was oh these dopers are stealing all the commercial real estate and it's driving prices up it's like well which way do you want it exactly. you know what wh which story are you trying to tell here and now what with the hell? and Adelson controlling uh, the media on this it's going to be very important for for people to have these you know these shows and opinions of Nevada cannabis news or or anybody else that has an independent news show to come out and say you're out of your mind things have definitely changed since Jim Rogers died yeah. Channel 3 kind of yeah. went away, kind of went their own way, and John Ralston got fired, and now the newspaper is doing their own thing, and it was a very interesting legislative session, to put it mildly, you know, we had Republicans doing the highest tax increase in Nevada history, it's just been a wild year in Nevada, for sure. I'm very interested to see what Do happens Do you think the Democrats year. are going to take the majority uh, in the next election? For, Not, for, for state? 
for, for State necessi- Nevada. Not necessarily. It could be. It's a possibility. I could. Mm-hmm. E- it could easily swing could back that swing way. Swing back the other sure, way. Sure, it could very easily swing yeah. back that way. But what I'm trying to say is, these people got elected in the red wave, as they called it, on mm-hmm. fiscal conservatism and the idea that we were going to put a stop to all this nonsense. And then they turn around less than three months later and pass the largest tax increase in Nevada history. What do you think the Democrats who like to increase taxes are saying? They're like, baby, we're in. Okay. You know, they're like, we, we, the gloves are off. You know, we can do whatever we want. Hell, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to introduce a state income tax soon, just because. Uh, oh, what, what, what's, oh what's stopping them? What's, who's going to stop them? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what, what's to stop the idea? I mean, we can do we can do anything we want now, since there are no party lines and anyone can do anything they want now. Why not? Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of got off on my own little thing there, but <laughs> that's all right. You know, that's, rah, rah, rah. We do it often. We do it often. Uh, speaking of getting off on our own little thing, we're going to go to commercial break, and we'll be right back. More Nevada You're Cannabis You're listening news? to the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Now, here again, the Weekend Radio Team. Hi, welcome back to Nevada Cannabis News. We're here with um, Maria and Duval from Scorpions Can. They're with Nevada State College, and they are the first or- student organization exclusively for c- cannabis in the state of Nevada. Very cool. Woohoo! If people want to join Scorpion Scan, do you guys have a Facebook page they can follow? Do you have a meetup page? Like, how do we? How do they find you? Yeah, mm-hmm. well, uh, we have the Nevada State College Scorpion Scan uh, Facebook page. So go there and like our page. We do uh, accept members from all around the community. Only thing is, you have to be a student to be a voting member. But yeah, anybody could be a member. Go to our Facebook page and click like on the on the page. And also, uh, I'd like to recommend you to everybody to check out the 420 Runner page as well. Absolutely. And one thing I left out about the Scorpions can, and I can't believe I left this out, but Uh-oh. I think it okay. was mentioned earlier. But one of our big things that we're trying to do is raise awareness on campus about IP1. You know, mm-hmm. and the and. Uh, let everybody know how they should vote or about the vote that's coming up and to get registered to vote and all of that yes. for next November. And we're trying to raise that awareness now on campus because normally we have uh, polls even set up on our campus where people come from the community to vote at and stuff. And so, yeah, we're really trying to get that message out to the students as well because... What's next for Scorpions Can? You guys seem to be rocking it at Nevada State College. Are you hoping to expand to the other campuses, CSN, uh, UNLV? Or yeah, well, or actually, well, I'm working with some of the other organizations, some students uh, that are a part of a group called YAL on CSN and uh, UNLV. And next year when I go to grad school at UNLV, uh, if I go to grad school, that's plan B, by the way. <laughs> um, um, anyways, uh, I do want to start help get started Coyotes Can and Rebels Can. So there will be a Rebels Cannabis Awareness Network if I go to grad school there for sure. And there, will, there may be a Coyotes Cannabis Awareness Network. It's the CSN Coyotes or whatever. And hopefully later on down the line we'll do the... Um, the UNR, uh, their mascot. Wolfpack? Yeah, Wolfpack. the Wolfpack can. Yeah, the Wolfpack <laughs> can. And yeah, exactly. So we want to open that up to uh, a statewide thing right now. Love it. You know, that's. I love that you're taking a proactive uh, stance on that because I've been banging this drum for a while now is that people have a lot of a lot of passion, but they're not necessarily registered to vote or have the ability to get down on that. I've said this, told the story just last week. I was at a Tom Petty concert in California. Last time it was up for a vote in there. All these kids are real excited. No one was registered to vote. Of course, there's a 30-day registration window. So we're very happy that you're you're taking the lead on that and trying to get these kids ready to roll because you know that's the whole thing. It's all about turning turning out when the time comes. You know, we can talk on Facebook all we want, but we really need these kids to show up when when it matters. You know, I don't care who they vote for president for. Just this is kind of a one issue thing for me. So yeah, and then made tours. Yeah, and one of the amazing things is um. Every single major and minor that we have at our college that we offer for study, these uh, are going to be having job opportunities, specifically in the cannabis industry, on down the line. You know, from biology to chemistry to psychology to sociology to visual media, mathematics, history, all of these things. Once this thing gets really picking up steam and grows, you know, we're going to be... we're really going to be picking that up. And like she was saying a minute ago, we do... Um, we do tours, lab tours. We offer um, 
we'll go around and ask some students and faculty. We try to get some faculty in there to actually come out to some of the labs. I believe there's two of them out here in Nevada. Well, you in medical Vegas. marijuana labs? Yeah, there's MM Lab. Marijuana. We went yeah. there. MM We've Labs. Gone to them and we got a student right now like working at Ace Analytical. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, what do you oh, guys? Uh, and we've done the hike. We did it. We've we led a hike. Yeah, we hike. We led a 420 hike. Hike yeah. with the 420 runner. <laughs> uh, right something on. like that. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny any, <laughs> any medicating. <laughs> All right. So, um, what do you guys is uh, take on the Carers Act? Uh, the Carers Act um, will basically uh, make cannabis a Schedule Two drug. So, what's your take mm, on the Carers Act? No. <laughs> no, it sounds, look, it sounds great. It does sound great. Schedule, schedule two, da, da, da. I fear what that will do is it will make it available for research only by the companies that have the resources to qualify under the federal guidelines. So that would be under more NIDA. like, it would be like Merck, Pfizer, uh, Kaiser Permanente, you know, Bayer, people like that, which Pfizer, yeah. That's okay mm -hmm. because we want these big companies doing this research, but what I'm fearful of is them snatching it from us. Taking yeah, well, well, before you know it, if Pfizer has control of marijuana, before you know it, we'd be taking drug tests for weed jobs. Mm -hmm. And that's not really my vision of the industry, as I've said before, and that's my only gripe about it. Deschedule it completely or take it down another notch so you can get some, some of these lower-level companies uh, like Cannabis Science Inqu Research Foundation. Yep. They don't have the... They don't have the funds that Pfizer and people do, but they would love to be able to to research it legally and do things like that. Well, in my, the States, so. that's a great take on it. But my my take on this is that if you make it a Schedule Two or a Class Two controlled substance, now the whole pharmaceutical industry and the dispensary industry are going to have to be pharmacies. So every oh. all this, all the California, all the Oregon, all all no everything No more mom and pop here, shops. No more mom and pop shops. But the the existing shops are now going to have to hire a pharmacist, huh. and they're not, now going to be under the direction of the state right. board of pharmacy right. under every state that they're in. Exactly, they'll be regulated. I'm not so sure if I'm down with that either. Yeah. We've we've done quite well for ourselves without that intervention. So, That's what do you think? Know. Um, well, I mean, there is a state, I can't recall off the top of my head, where hmm. that, that is the model for their dispensaries to uh, require a pharmacist to be owning or part of and on staff at... Uh, yeah. at there are those you know who what, say... you know what state that is? That, I, I no. don't know what state I that is. it was like is. a northeast state. It could be Vermont, maybe. There uh, are those who say it gives legitimacy to the industry because of it. Mm -hmm. Well, Real are we saying, you know, we're cannabis people. Do we really need their legitimacy? Well, they haven't been here fighting the fight with us, and now they want to take it. That's what's disappointing if they would have been so proactive uh, before. Oh, well, our producer's telling me we're uh, short on time, so I guess we got to thank our sponsors before we bail <laughs> out of here. All right. Nevada Pure. We have also Inyo that we'd like to thank, and Las Vegas Relief. Mm -hmm. uh, who else am I forgetting? Vegas All Night Radio. Thank Vegas. you again for mm -hmm. allowing us to... Uh, pitch our message and we highly encourage you to visit all of our sponsors and thank you again mr dorsey and Ms. vegas Maria. 420 thank runner vegas us. 420 runner week. views and opinions expressed on this program